We are live. Welcome to the Comic Book Conservation Show, episode five. I got Phantom Phil with me. Howdy. Say hi to the people. Hi, everybody. My name's Phil, and I'm the Phantom. Phil with two L's. Get it straight. Yep. So we got actually some exciting stuff to talk about today, and I'm really pumped for the show. Captain Larry is going to join us in progress. So I have a segment that we're going to kick off with, and we're going to talk about auction prices, conservation books, restoration books, and fair market value and record breakers. Mike's in the house. What's happening, Hugo Danner? How was your week, Phil? It was good. Very busy, but good. I just, uh, just got back from um, New Jersey today. I was at a, a meetup for original comic book art. So as you can see, kind of behind me, actually, some of my, most of my collections framed. So I had to make a mad dash to take down some frames and put mm. some pieces in the portfolio just to share what I have. We'll have to talk about original art sometime just as a sideshow or a bonus show maybe mm. i i don't have a large collection but i have a few pieces that i really like and i guess that's the big thing about original art you, you need to buy stuff you like yeah. star man's well, here hey david how are you there's there's quite a lot of it and there's more uh affordable art than i think a lot of people yeah uh, i think um, surely there's quite a bit that's <laughs> out of most of our price range too. So sure. that's okay. But. but there's a lot of affordable original art and, um, it's kind of amazing because every piece is one of one, right? So, so it, it, in relation to the channel too, I did, um, unintentionally, I, I went just to be social. You know, I like, I'm, I'm a collector first and foremost, but I did leave with a, uh, an original cover um a published cover that someone gave me to uh seal a tear that was on it to work on yeah yeah, yeah there's a lot of work to do on original art it was um although one would think it would be treasured it was just often viewed as part of the process and disposable and um or so worthless. there are paste ups there's glue there's tape there's coffee stains white out you know well. And then also, I understand a big part of how you got into the business actually was with doing um, where sometimes original art doesn't have the copy on it or doesn't have the word balloons and such. Yeah. And so you would recreate that as an acetate overlay or something for people? I started doing that before doing any work on the comics. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But now there's some some obvious overlap. Both things are paper while, while different. So uh, sealing a tear on a... a you know, comic art board has some overlap in how we seal tears on comic books. So Sure, yeah. Well, I think we should get started. So first topic today, I think everybody in the comic world and even a lot of people that aren't in the comic world are talking about the heritage auction I guess it still has a couple sessions open, but the big day was mm -hmm. Thursday where we broke a new world record for the most expensive comic book ever crossing the auction block. Yep. I don't think it surprised anyone. Nope. And I thought we'd take the opportunity of that new record to look at what are the records for restored and conserved books. And it turns out there was Another also record. a record broken okay. for the most expensive restored comic book ever to cross the auction block. It happened in the same auction. It happened in the same session, actually. So good opportunity. Um, I like doing these. And again, I think it's pertinent to the work we do. Again, it doesn't make any Absolutely sense is. to do hundreds of hours of work or commit hundreds or thousands of dollars of equity to a book if you're not going to at least break even, right? I mean, there's yeah. there's one thing to sort of do right by the book, but you don't want to you don't want to bankrupt yourself doing right by the book, right? So, exactly. so I think these are relevant to 
our main topic, which is conservation. And I think it's evolving so fast that it's uh, something that isn't decided. So it's kind of always interesting to me. So it's also the intersection of personal finance and uh, comic books, two things I love. So comic and comic art signature auction, April 4th through the 7th, Heritage. And these two books both cross the auction block, I think within an hour of one another. Maybe I within minutes of one another. They were, yeah, they were consecutive. Was, was I did not active, watch yeah. it live, but I, I knew in the catalog they were consecutive. So, yeah. um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> let's. I mean, we could we could just stare at them for a little while, but let's let's talk a little bit about each one of them. So, let's start here where I like to start. The CGC census has forty four universal copies. Another 30 restored, one qualified, three conserved. And so obviously that's total all grades 78. I think it's well known that there are at least two high grades that are not slabbed. Phil, mm -hmm. is that is that to my knowledge at least two jibe with what you've heard too? Yeah. Several sort of prominent people have said, hey, I know there's a this is in one collection and this is in another. Uh, from what I understand. Um, the mile high is not slabbed, the mile high copy. Mm. Gosh, I deal with so many books. I don't want to misspeak. Yeah. Uh, well, here. I could be but, wrong about that, I, but I, two I, very I, high grade copies I are not slabbed. Right. They may, so the, the highest, um, universal are two copies in Nino currently. It is believed that there is one. There are one or two copies that are potentially higher than that that are raw still. But we're talking about a book that almost certainly has fewer than a hundred copies surviving because they, you know, we may still find a new one, but most of them are most likely found by now. And if we yeah. do, you know, it's 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 longer and longer between new discoveries now. Yeah, so I'd at some point, there, there just won't be any more. That's my, that's my guess is, is about say 125. Again? 125 or so. I would say that there's a... You think there's that many? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, there's at least that. some, I guess, in CBCI. I didn't, yeah. I didn't look at their, their uh, census. And I know there's at least one book there because we're going to talk about it. Um, but at any rate, it's a small number, right? Um, yeah, yeah. For all attempts and purposes, a very small number. As I said, highest universal is a 90. There are two there. Highest restored in CGC census is a 94. And highest conserved is an 80. There are two conserved at, uh, wait, there's, there's one at eight, one at seven, and one at 5.5. So, in case you don't know, <laughs> 1938, first Superman, first superhero start of the golden age. This is the book that created American comic books in many ways. They existed before this, but it, um, it created an entire movement and in a huge market. Iconic. Yeah. A little bit more about that census. The last time one of the nine O's sold, it was in 2014 for 3.2 million. Um, of note in the last one that I'm aware of that sold prior to to the sale this week was the 6.0 in 2022. I believe that was the rocket copy. Yeah, um, so so called because it has a really cool stamp of a a rocket ship on it. Um, that's at 6.0 in in traded hands for three million. I think nobody was shocked at no. the sale of this Kansas City. Now, one thing that's interesting, this Kansas City at 8.5, it's obviously a pedigree book in addition to being um, having only two higher graded universal in the census. It was originally graded at an 8.0. It was re-slabbed and regraded. Presumably, it was cleaned and pressed at the time. It is still in a universal holder. Mm -hmm. And it was bumped to an 8.5 at some point in the last few years. This particular grade was assigned in 2021. And again, it, it's just one of the best copies out there. I, I would say it's certainly one of the top 10 copies known yeah. of the of the most important comic book ever produced. 
You could make an argument it's one of the top five. It probably yeah. is. I don't know if it's quite one of the top three. May Probably not. But it's up there, right? And so if you got to have this book and you're a whale, <laughs> there's not yeah, going to be very fine. many chances to find a, a nicer copy than this one. Uh, Grader's notes include a small bindery tear top of spine, small crease left top of back cover, tear with crease top of front cover, very light staple rust. For the record, those are the exact same grader notes that it had when it was an 8.0. So what they improved, quote unquote, hard to say, but at any rate. Kind of light track cleaning or something, who knows? Yeah. Here's the book, and it's stunning. And it hammered for $6 million with the buyer's premium. Um, again, I don't think this shocked anybody. I, I don't think Jaws would have hit the floor if this would have went to 7 or $8 million. Honestly, I think it would have had to go to $10 million to be shocking. Yeah. Um, the, the book that held the record before this one was a copy of Superman 1 at $5.3 million. And frankly, this book is just so much more important than Superman 1 that to me it was inconceivable that this wouldn't go for more than that book. No, it is, um, it is um, striking. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, so yeah. <clears throat> I don't think – I think this was – honestly, I think it was well bought. And I think the buyer knows that. They have this make an offer to the owner starts at $7.5 million. That – buyer is not interested in even thinking about an offer less than 7.5 million. They can't go buy another one of these. So no, <laughs> no, the, um, you know, the two raw ones are locked away in, in collections. Um, the nine, the nine Oh, who knows? Uh, I mean, I'm sure some people know I don't happen. I don't follow it that closely. It is. So, it is. It is remarkable too, though. Just like uh, if you try to, I'm very biased, of course, but just objectively, when you look at this number, six million is a, a lot more than the average person could spend for sure. But looking at the antique market or the fine art market, for what this is, six million seems like a relative bargain for what other things go for, considering how important this is in popular culture. It, it really um, is. Well, yeah, let's talk about that. That's only 100 bit, it's less than 100 Bitcoin. <laughs> and what is Bitcoin? Pfft, nothing. It's imaginary, right? I mean, this is this is at least something people care about. Now, I get that this is still just a funny book, and it's just paper, right? Um, but yeah, I, I think, like I said, I actually think this was well bought. I expected I totally this agree. to go for seven to eight million. That was my expectation based on what the Superman. Yeah, Mike says chump change. Mike, check <laughs> the uh, check the the uh, cushions in the couch. Maybe we can scrape up enough to uh, make them an offer. Oh, Larry, um, study's going to be here in 15 minutes too. Yep. Cool. So the next book I want to talk about, mm -hmm. I, as you said, the very next book across the auction block, the next one to be hammered home was this Edo restored. So what more perfect example do we have to compare two books back to back. Now, I don't quite think it's fair to compare this one to the previous one. It is an 8.5 versus an 8. It's also a pedigree book. And when you start talking about this tall cotton, I think the pedigree matters. So I don't think this is quite apples to apples, but it's as close as we're going to get with a book this rare. We're, <laughs> we're not going to get a better example. Now, um, this book, let's let's actually go back real quick. Page quality on the Kansas City pedigree is off white to white. And again, this is one of the reasons why people like pedigree books. They tend to have nice paper Generally. quality as well. This book here is apparent MP, which is moderate, moderate. professional. Yeah. Page quality is cream to off-white. Restoration includes color touch. Pieces added, tear seals, cleaned and reinforced. Cover restoration, cover reinforced. Light color touch. Light multiple piece added. Light multiple tear sealed. Interior restoration, centerfold reinforced. Top back cover, small multiple crease. Top front cover, light multiple crease. This book looks really good. It presents 
exceedingly well. I went ahead and actually, I'm going to even just do this for a minute. Yeah, that is it, really sharp. Honestly, at arm's length, it looks near mint. It, I mean, I, I don't see a flaw on it. Yeah. It's a very nice book. And obviously, the work is professional level. I would not be shocked if you told me this was restored 9.0 or 9.4. I mean, I just, again, the the high the uh, high res scans are available. You can look at it, and it's a beautiful um, copy. Now, it hammered down right after the uh, Kansas City copy at five hundred seventy six thousand, which includes the buyer's premium. Here again, I think this was well bought. If I'm frank, I think this was more well bought than the Kansas City copy. I would not have been surprised at all for this to go double what it went for. I think what we've looked at is restored is somewhere around 25% of a universal. 25% yeah. would have put this at one point um 5 million three times what it sold for um almost and a relative bargain yeah yeah it and also one of the things we've been saying is there's a pattern the rarer the book is the the less of a discount so by that rationale I wouldn't have been shocked if this would have went for even more than that 1.5. No, I don't yeah. think it, in my mind, it's tough to get this book to a 2 million. But um, this honestly, to me, seems like a bargain. It really does. And I think again here that the buyer knows that. The buyer says, don't even bother me unless you're willing to offer me over a $1 over million dollars for it. Yeah. Um, now, again, I, t I said, this is not a fair comparison. This is not a pedigree book page quality is lower and it has it's moderate restoration it has been done beautifully it'd be great to know who did the work i, I think one thing that would be neat is if our graders know, few, few if the provenance was known if the graders yeah. notes would say who did the restoration work would be phenomenal mm. um that said here's the comparison <laughs> Wow. Again, like I don't that. think this was entirely fair. It's an eight yeah. versus an eight five. It's a pedigree versus a non pedigree. It's a higher paper quality, right? It's a high end book too. That's you know, it's it's a whole other volume. But I still would have expected this gap to be much smaller than this. You know, the that universal right. sold for right. almost ten x. Rather, it sold for more than ten x. So the restored sold for less than ten percent, right? And um this really flies in the face of what we've been seeing with a lot of the books we've been looking at. Remember just last week, we looked at that copy of tech one where a restored copy sold for more than the last sale of a universal, which wasn't that long ago in history, which obviously means the universal value has gone up. It needs to be bumped up. But yeah. at any rate, I thought that was really interesting. I hope the viewers do too. And I don't think it entirely answers the question. Now this restored 8.0, hammered for just less than 600 grand. That is a new record for a restored comic book. No restored comic book to our knowledge has traded hands for more money than that. So that is a pin. Um, that's the new bar. But uh, there are a few other things I wanted to talk about. Conserved books now, and this is really fascinating. There is a conserved action one the graded 8.0. Here are the graders' notes for the conserved book. This is the highest among the conserved copies of action one, and it's the sole highest. Yeah, Cover clean, sure. reinforcement, spine split, tear seals, light crease light spine stress lines, multiple rubs, small chip out bottom of spine, small chip on top of spine, very small stain, top of front cover. But look at how beautiful this book is. Wow. Gorgeous. Now, this book sold in a 
Com- there we go. Comic Connect, I believe. Yes, that looks like the the format of the 2017. Yeah. So this is a while ago. It sold for 461,000. I think obviously it's going for much more today. I do think it it almost by definition has to sell for more than the restored 8.0, which is yeah. obviously just around 600 grand. My guess this book is 700,000, 800,000. It's in that ballpark, I think. If it to if it was to cross the block today, I think this is the most valuable conserved comic book on the planet. Um, as far as I could tell, this is the record paid for a conserved book back in 2017. I don't believe one has crossed the auction block for more than this. There is a high-grade copy of Captain America Comics number one that is conserved, but mm-hmm. it went for less than this in the, at the last sale. So I think this is the most valuable conserved comic book on the planet. This is the last price point, but it's back in 2017. We can only speculate what it's worth today. But I thought it was interesting to point it out. We know about this book, and I do think, um, to our knowledge, it's the most valuable conserved book. Now, that 8.0 Restored Action is not the highest graded restored action comic in the world. There are several higher graded, and there are a couple of other books that I think compete for what is the most valuable. So we have the record, and we know what the record is, but that doesn't mean it's the most valuable. So this is a book that is a CBCS 9.6 restored. I did not pull up the grader's notes because I just kind of wanted to speculate on a couple of books here. But this is offered by Comic Warehouse. This is um, Sharon. She's a, this is, Comic Warehouse is actually a, is a great vendor, by the way. They're here in Texas. I've interacted with Sharon a little bit. Bought a couple books from her. Super honest, super straightforward, great person to work with. Um, she has this book right now offered on eBay for $2.5 million. It's a 9.6 restored, as I said, CBCS. What is this book really worth? Now, mm-hmm. I used yeah. the argument last week to say if it's sitting there, it has been there for a while at 2.5 million. There are no takers. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that means to me the fair market value is something less than 2.5 million. I don't know what it is, mm-hmm. but I think this is one of the books that needs to be considered for the rank of most valuable restored comic book on the planet. There is, I believe, a CGC 9.4 restored as well. I could not find it offered anywhere, and I couldn't actually find a sale for it either, so I don't know if there's any history on that one. But there's one other book I wanted to talk about that I think should also be in this conversation, and it's this book. There is a Tech 27 that is a CGC restored 9.4. And I think this is another book that should be in the conversation. What is the most valuable restored comic book on the planet? These really big whale books have not crossed the auction block as far as I could tell. Um, You might want maybe this view. I was trying to find you the view that you... Yeah, you can't really read it anyway. But these are the books I think should be in the conversation. The two high-grade restored action ones and this Tech 27 high-grade restored. Mm -hmm. One of them is the most valuable restored comic book in the world. I think the conserved action one at 8.0 is the most valuable conserved comic book in the world. And I think we're just going to have to wait for one of these to cross the auction block to find out which one for sure. Yeah. And it might even be that they take turns breaking each other's records, <laughs> as is so often the case. Which would you rather have between the Detective 27, 9, 4, or the Action 1, 9, 6? I guess if those are the two examples. I'd rather have this book here. Yeah. Yeah, same. Well. <laughs> Um, I get the argument for the other book. It might make more financial sense. I think my decision is partially, 
um, emotional. It probably makes more financial sense to to take the other the uh, action book, but yeah. I like this character better. I like this cover better, and you have to tell me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and you know the census on this book. This is rarer than Action One as well, right? Yeah, yeah. So According to the census. Yeah. yeah, I'd rather have this one, but again, I think actually this. Financially, the decision would be to take – actually, financially, the decision probably if you had to force yourself to bet on one, it would be the 9.4 CGC action one. Mm. That would be probably if, – if, if I had – if you forced me to bet on one of these books, if they were all going to cross the auction block at the same time, I would bet on that one. I think CBCS 9.6 is going to be discounted in the marketplace. I mean, I when you get when you get to the whales like this, it's one thing for a modern book that's a nine eight. You know, it could go for whatever, right? It could be the same as CGC, a little bit less, a yeah. little bit more. When you're talking to the whales here, uh, they're fairly conservative. You don't make this kind of money by being by not, or, or even maybe you you were a risk taker at one you point. You can be emotional but, too. But once you yeah. have this yeah. kind of money, typically you yeah. are conservative because you need to preserve your capital, and I think the buyers at that level are going to pay more for a nine, four CGC than they will for a nine, six CBCS. It's just reality. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think that's actually financially the, the best bet. This one for me is, is the one though. This one's emotionally the, uh, the one I would go for. Yeah. So I think what we should do is talk about our comic book conservation community for a minute give Larry a moment to show up. He should be here. This is exactly 15 minutes from when he said he'd be here in 15 minutes. I would like anybody who's interested in this show or comic book conservation to come check us out on Facebook. Wonderful community, super supportive. We are a place to talk about your projects, to show off, to ask questions, to ask for help, to ask for input or a second opinion and it's actually there's not a lot of rules so if you want to sell conserved books or even sell your services it's also fine there but um i have had a lot of fun there because we can't put all of our content onto youtube it is a lot of work and i wouldn't get any real conservation work done if i was putting it all on youtube so this is a place to have a little bit less formal conversation. And again, it's more interactive and very collaborative. So please check it out. We have had, since we started sort of pitching this during the live show, we've had a few new members every week. And um, I want to welcome all of you to come and check it out. It is a closed group. And the reason for that is, you know, people sometimes are working on books that they don't want the knowledge of their work to be public. And um, so you do have to answer a couple questions and, and have a, you know, basically just have a real interest and not be, um, <laughs> I, I mean, I get requests from some odd, you, you, Understand. you know, some of the, some of the requests are, are uh, clearly not fans of comic books. <laughs> um, so the next topic we were going to talk about today is one that we really shouldn't jump all the way into um, without Larry being here, but it is our kind of main topic for the night, and that is a comic book that Larry worked on on his channel. For those of you that don't know, Captain Larry is our other co-host. He's at Flying L Comics here on YouTube, and it's a, primarily a conservation channel. He bought this book raw, and he wet cleaned it. He sent it off to CGC and came back a 6.5 universal. <laughs> um, I know there are people's heads that are exploding right now. And I also know people who frankly don't know what they're talking about will say, well, that's restored. That's restored. And we're here to say clearly it is not restored here's larry here i am hey guys 
Incredible How timing. are you? Good. That's all the timing. Perfect timing. <laughs> I was we... listening to uh, you guys on the drive home, so oh, I did. I was caught up in everything. I I, I wish I could have one of those uh, action ones. Those are great. You don't? I thought you had no, one in the, I, in the vault. Well, I, I got a photocopy of one. <laughs> 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 all right. So, so here we are. Um, here we are. We're ready to talk about your book. And okay. this is a book for those that want to see all the behind the scenes step by step. It's all on Larry's channel, Flying L Comics. There's a link in the description. And of course, you should be subscribed there, following him, etc. He's, I believe, also had some posts in our Facebook group where if you want to have more interaction and ask him questions, it's a great place to do that. Um, we're, There's we're sort no of starting questions. with a spoiler here. Yeah. The ahead. book was fully wet cleaned and it came back 6.5 universal. So that's the spoiler. Now we're going to work through some of the details and, uh, Larry, I prepped the slides Good. and, you know, I put some of my own interpretation into it a little bit and okay. I, I actually have a, I have something at the end for you. I hope it's not going to be putting you on the spot too much, but we'll see when we get there. I I'll leave that as a spoiler for folks, too. Okay. <laughs> so this, just, I, I just wanted to say, uh, just to clarify, um, this was not done um, out of anything other than your, um, your, your hobby and interest in working on the books. Like, this Correct. wasn't done to achieve a specific end result. No. This, it was, this result is simply the result of the nuance of grading. Yeah, this, there's, is there's really there's, the, the cornerstone yeah. of this conversation. Yeah, there was there's no ulterior motives. This is just something, yeah. you know, I this this is my hobby thing. And I wanted to clean it up and get it graded. And uh that was about it. And uh I did fully wet clean it. It's all documented. Um <laughs> The uh, the fact that it came back uh, as a universal label shocked me uh, as well. Uh, I was expecting a conserved label because by all means, everything I did to it was conserved. Um, I wasn't trying to be deceptive with CGC or anything like that. This is just how it happened. Well, we're gonna show we're gonna show the in process shots of what you did, sure. and you can you can talk over them. Let's okay. start with an orientation here. And actually, while we're talking about it, let's backfill just a little bit more top level information. Um, okay. Larry, this is a book for your PC. Was purchased as such. You do Correct. sometimes sell comic books. Um, I do. And but one thing you don't do is you don't clean and press or conserve books for others. Anything you no, do. I do not is for your own collection or PC or potentially something you might sell. No, I'll, I'll leave that to uh, the pros like Phil and yeah. uh, go from there. This is everything I do is my own books. I, you, know, you can look behind me. I've got boxes and boxes of books. The stuff you see on the wall behind me is stuff I'm in process of working on. Mm -hmm. So they're all mine. Uh, I, I've had several people ask me to work on books. Uh, I, I refuse. I don't, I don't want the liability of ruining somebody's grail. Um, yeah. so if I'm going to ruin something, uh, there's no, you know, I'll, I'll take care of ruining my own stuff. Right. But, uh, and, yeah. I, and I, while I, we're going on the yeah. record, I, I take occasional books from people. Um, I, as yeah, a matter of fact, there's a true. few people here in the chat that I have, I literally have their books right now, but I don't as a general rule. It's basically people that have befriended me and said, hey, could you work on this or that for me? And I very rarely take cash, although occasionally I do trade um, services yeah, I, for I, comics. I, that yeah, sort of trade, thing. trade would be the only thing I, that I would ever yeah, do. Yeah, that's, it keeps it more fun. Yeah. So, and um, Starman, I'm going to get That's I like you guys. <laughs> you guys, you're, 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 you're community hobbyists. Yeah, like, well, that, that's like, exactly what we are. Yeah, you're yeah, you're the yeah, you're I the pro it. in the room. This is what you do for a living. You your work is phenomenal. Uh, yeah, we're just uh, we're, you guys have phenomenal work too. I, I, I'm like, an amateur. Uh, no, no, yeah, I'm gosh, an amateur. Yeah. Hey, but part of the conversation here is your work was done to such a high degree for con conservation standards like, yeah. that it was not um, perceptible. Like yeah. to the so, so let's, save yeah. let's save that conversation. Yeah, let's save that conversation. Let's let's let the story I'm so roll sorry. out. So <laughs> I, I have a narrative here. So this book, um, talk us through the grade from A one. I think they they had it at four point five. Yeah. 
a little back background on A1. On the West Coast, uh, they are, in my opinion, the, the largest. They're, they're the big they're the big dog on the block. Um, and Brian Peets, uh, who is the uh, the owner, he's been uh, he was a former professional football player, and he's always collected comics all his life. He's well, he's in his uh, late sixties now, but he has been, a, you know, really a professional grader for over forty years, and he handles all the golden age books. Uh, a big chunk of the stuff behind me, that I, I I got from him uh, personal selections. Um, now I trust his grades completely. Uh, no yeah. doubt. He, he graded this himself at a 4.5 and uh, he did grade it conservatively. I think which, that's, which as that's, a shop owner is what most people do. They'll, they'll figure out what it is, then knock it down a half a grade. Yeah, so, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just from having seen now on your channel, at least half a dozen books that you purchased from there, I do think they're grading conservatively, which is what you like yeah. to see that way. Absolutely. If they miss something, they're still in the range, right? And they they have a happy customer. So sure. here's the book, and I agree with you. I I think it's more like a five. Um, yeah, yeah, I thought so too. Maybe even a five five if, from my perspective. But again, I didn't see it, and we're splitting hairs here. And again, you like to see it conservatively graded. Yeah. By the way, Mike, what do you think of this date stamp on here? <laughs> Hugo Danner's a huge fan of date stamps. Yeah, I, 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 I don't remove date stamps. I, there's no, no. yeah, in, they, unless they're written by hand. Uh, CGC is not going to dock you for it. So. I, I don't yeah. even remove the handwritten ones. Those were yeah. often by a store clerk, and, and they're even well, kind of more personal. Um, you're going to do more damage trying to remove it than you most of the time. Leaving it, so yeah. yeah. So uh, it presents quite well. It's a solid book, right? Here yep. you are prepping. No tears, to nothing in it. Staples. And this is the first time I, I, I had seen it uh, on these videos. These, and for everybody, these are all screen grabs from the videos. Mm -hmm. um, I've removed the staples at this point. We're looking at it, uh, taking the, the, the wraps out for the first time. And really, there's, there's really no perceptible damage to it. It's just dirty. And right. so, uh, you know, well, that, it's, it's tanned. It does have some, it's got some mild, con, mild condition issues vis-a-vis -vis yeah. some color rub, some surface wear, some blunted corners. Yeah. But it's, structurally, um, structurally, yeah, structurally, it's structurally, structurally well, super solid. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was a little bit on the, the wrinkly side, you know, typical for the age. So really all I did was, uh, deacidify it and, uh, press it. But it was yeah. done completely and wet. well. I'm going to show those. So yep. okay. Um, so this is before. The, yeah. So I wanted everybody to be able to see. This is the before. This is the before cover. Once you've removed the Correct. that's just interior. the opposite side of what you're just, just the cover. Yeah. Just the and cover. here's just the cover again from the reverse. Considerable amount of tanning here. You can also see some of the creasing finger bends and other little. Yeah, it was printed defects. a little crooked, but you know that doesn't really matter. So. No. And here's the part. And here it is. Here's Everybody your wet gets work. nauseous when they pour liquid on a on a comic. <laughs> yeah, here it is. Just the first time. Yeah. Here's yeah. the evidence that it was fully was wet. What? Fully submerged, Merge. submersion, submersion, aqueous bath. Talk about your recipe here and the number of washes, the amount of time. Okay. Sort of well, I actually use your recipe there, Dr. Paul. Uh, that is the 25% solution of calcium hydroxide with the mm -hmm. Triton uh, X100 in mm -hmm. there. Just a few drops to put the exact same recipe you use. The only thing is I, I add just a fractional amount of uh, hydrogen peroxide. Mm -hmm. Probably about, I think this, actually I take that back. And this one I did not. Um, this is just strictly a, a de deacidification. So yeah, if I'd put the peroxide in and done the blue light and the whole, the whole slam, I'd probably be whiter, which we didn't mm -hmm. really want to get too too much into. So I think uh, it, it did go into the blue light, but it didn't go in with uh, peroxide that I recall. So, so pretty conservative. Pretty conservative, yeah, because it was really a nice copy, and Beautiful. and I, I really, you know, I did want to you know get a good good. Great on it. Didn't want to get slammed too hard because, you know, I've had books that 
um, we put in, they just come back, they're, they're bone white. And uh, mm-hmm. that's not the way they looked like when they originally came off the press. They shouldn't yeah. look like that now. And I've been, I mean, on my channel, I've never done the really over whitened books. I, it's just been my habit from day one. I very rarely, I have only used, I only use hydrogen peroxide when I have an actual stain. If somebody spilled coffee on a book and I water, need water an oxidizing standard. agent yeah. Yeah. to get rid of that stain, then I will use hydrogen peroxide. I have never used it just to whiten paper. Um, now I do use the blue lights. I think they're more conservative approach. And just to backfill a little bit with the calcium hydroxide, the calcium hydroxide buffers the paper. We leave it in the paper. So it leaves what's known as an alkaline reserve. So the paper is now buffered going forward. It is more stable than what you started with. And it is there in the instance where Larry does use the hydrogen peroxide. The hydrogen peroxide is an oxidizing agent. It takes the carbonyl groups in the paper and well in the cellulose technically and it re- it further oxidizes them to carboxyl groups but then the hydrogen um the calcium rather uh hydroxide will then neutralize those bonds and then we leave that alkaline buffer in there the paper is far more stable than what you started with so yeah, this yeah. is actually a process that is not only is it not degenerative, it's actually yeah. restorative to the paper. And I don't use yeah. that in the in the standpoint of restoration. Yeah. I use that in the standpoint of it is returning paper quality to the yeah. degraded pulp paper. Because pulp paper, as designed, is only intended to last 50 years. Yeah. That's when it was designed and manufactured, the intention was 50 years max. It's all considered disposable. This is why newspapers are printed on it. They thought nobody they, a week from now, all this news is yep. obsolete in the in this newspaper is a rag and it's garbage. It doesn't need to last more than that. So they came up with a recipe for super cheap paper that had a very short lifespan. That's what comic books are made from. Yep. So what we've done is we've actually mitigated some of that manufacturing process and we've turned it into a paper that actually has more permanence. And um, Mike, Mike, Mike said he bought this issue new off the spinner rack. Man, if if we could have well, bought this new off the spinner rack. Oh, I, well, by the way, you know no, we're not we even talking about this book, but I love anyway. this comic book. This is one of my favorite Silver Age. I mean, when Banshee shows up and he sort of looks like a leprechaun. <laughs> it's hilarious. And I I've always really liked the character. I mean, I think Claremont and Byrne did a great job with him. Um, so this is, this is actually first the copy. first Silver Age X-Men oh, book wow. I ever bought. It, obviously, I bought it as a back issue, um, but I love this book. So there are several reasons why I was happy to feature this this week. Yeah, the, 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 I've always this is my very first uh, copy of this, and yeah, it does go to my PC. Um, it's, it's just now awesome. we're talking about the peroxide. If I do the peroxide treatment, it's only on the first rinse. And the yes, sub- subsequent in, rinses so, are strictly, ju- you know, the second rinse is really to get rid of the soapiness and the final yep. rinse is the, so pretty much the same thing. This is and, the results of the first rinse. Right. And further to that point, that is where the, the, the calcium hydroxide wash is actually neutralizing any of those oxidized groups on the cellulose chain that have been created. And so it is important if you are going to use it. And again, I'm, I'm never an absolutist. I've never said anybody who uses hydrogen peroxide is crazy or whatever. I just choose to yeah. only use it in very specific instances. And if you are going it, to use yeah. it, you should use it responsibly. And Larry's using it very responsibly. It's a very yeah. conservative amount and it's only in the first rinse. And then the calcium hydroxide in the next two rinses is actually neutralizing anything that did happen. There's yep. no trace of it, and um, that's a very responsible way to use it when you are going to use it. And, and I usually do three uh, wet cycles, and by yeah. the by the final one, it's usually the the tannins are out the, and it's it's running mostly closely clear. Mm-hmm. So, and this and is so the here's the after. here's the after for the cover, much wider. 
Um, also, just to clarify, the durations of your wash, that, oh, that's yeah. also an important that's, that's, aspect. That, that is important. They, they're, they're usually, this book, I did, there were uh, five minutes. Yeah. Uh, that that was it because that was my longer, first question I remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah cause cause anything like, longer than that, you start you know breaking down a lot of exactly, stuff. The, yeah, the so, the, the, the silver, the, yeah, the sizing comes out. The Silver Age marbles are notorious for shedding ink. Uh, yep. You know, you saw the the flakiness, uh, things like that. So you got to mm -hmm. be really careful. I'll watch them really closely now, uh, but five minutes for for, mm -hmm. for these because once once the sizing comes out of it you have a whole nother issue you know you're you're basically yeah. dealing with a, a piece of paper towel napkin <laughs> whatever you want to call it it's all flimsy and floppy which is not the way you want to handle a book so i think we should just address this fr question from nicholas real quick and, and yeah it's yeah. not especially per it's not exactly on topic here yeah, but you it, know no, i brought it up question. So it was designed to last 50 years. Obviously, pulp paper does last longer than that. Action One is over 80 years old now, and they're still here. Um, so preservation depends a lot on the conditions of storage. So when I make when I quote that 50 years, that 50 years is it's it's expected to last 50 years in in what they consider to be kind of normal storage. And that means essentially, I got blamed somehow for doing quotes. That means essentially something that is just kind of sitting out in the house and exposed to air, light, those sorts of things. So anything that's been tucked away, that's been in something with less, uh, less light, uh, lower temperatures, dry. This is why the Mile High collection is so stunning because – if you've ever been over there in Denver, it, the the humidity is like 2% all year round. <laughs> yeah. And so it's, there's just no water in the air. And um, they those were also stored, I believe, in cedar chests, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, obviously it can last a lot longer. Um, the 50-year sort of rule of thumb is for what they consider to be sort of standard storage, meaning just kind of around your house somewhere. And so slabbing, of course, is... Um, on the, one of the best things you can do for the book. And so, yes, of course, if you, once you put a comic in a slab, I'm not going to say it arrests all forward, um, degradation cause it doesn't. Yeah. I was going to say a lot of things matter. To deteriorate, it's just going to deteriorate in, inside the slab more slowly. But the other thing yeah. that matters is the condition when you put it in. So one of the things about these books, about this paper, about acid catalyzed hydrolysis of the cellulose chain is that it will start a downward spiral. Meaning if it was stored for the first 10 years of its life in a hot, humid environment, and then another copy was stored in a, in a nice cool dry environment from that and then at 10 years they were both put in the perfect environment that one that's had that was in the the hot humid environment for the first 10 years it will continue to degrade at an accelerated pace because it's already started this feedback loop of the acids creating more acids breaking down more paper which then yeah. breaks down more paper etc 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 so it all matters once something has been exposed to the elements the only way to arrest that is to do what you've seen larry do here which is a conservation where you deacidify the paper and you leave an alkaline buffer in it you can also reverse a certain amount of brittleness by doing that as well yeah Oh, um, thank you. Oh, hold on. Oh. I wanted to show this one first. The the micro chamber paper too is important because um, I've cracked out enough books where uh, eventually the book does need to be recased because that mm -hmm. micro chamber paper has absorbed so much that it's the book is basically basking in its own filth. And then yep. kind of what Paul just said, you're going to hit the point of kind of acceleration when it's actually going to start to get worse. Um, so I think they recommend it's every 12 years plus or minus that books should be, um, taken out and, and re -slabbed. That's a rule of thumb, but the, the bottom line there is also, it depends on the condition Storage of the going in. Too. Yeah. And not exactly that too. Um, so the, the microfiber paper does a lot of the same things that the conservation bath does, but without the risk and the labor involved in the bath, it's basically putting a buffer in close contact with the paper 
And some of that buffer will migrate into the paper and neutralize some of the acids. Some of the acids from the paper will migrate into the microchamber paper. You know, that reminds me, Phil, when I cracked that Adventure Comics uh, 60 to send to you, no microchamber paper in the slab from CGC. I meant to bring it up when, we, when we watched the video. None, not a single sheet. That also, sometimes it's just one. None. But, and none at all is very rare. Yeah, I have the same, same thing. Well, I have, one, it, on, one, I have one, it on video. Two. I've had it happen maybe twice of all the books I've cracked, which is exceedingly rare. <laughs> yeah, well, there it is. Um, so here's the reverse. Tanning uh, essentially removed. We don't see that that big gradation from the edge to the interior. It's much more uniform, as you said, though not bleached. So yeah, it's just, still it's still got that cream, that, that that creamy color. That Love little color. smudge you see down at the, uh, the the bottom left. That's actually a wet spot. Because right, I, that's not a stain. Yeah, that, that was that just was a just, spot it was that was still wet. a little damp. I set it. I set it down on the. On a on a drop of water. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Maybe I get the, yeah. 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 Beautiful. Easy fix. Just tedious. Yeah. So obviously ink is well preserved, and here Here's the wraps. here just to, again to demonstrate to everybody the entire interior also done. Now the interior and the cover are different kinds of paper. They're both uh, pulp papers, but the interior here is starts life uh, much less it, it has different additives it's much less white and it behaves differently in the wash and but your wash here i believe was the same yeah the washes i are are all identical the only difference is is as you say they're a different type of paper uh getting the tannins out uh, and the acids out takes a little bit longer. So in these typical watches are generally 15 minutes. Um, rarely on occasion, I'll go to 30 minutes if I don't see any real subsequent change to it. So, And that, that actually is a great segue to the point I wanted to make, which is they're much more robust. They are. These, these interior pages can sit in water for a long they time. They can withstand a lot. They're much more durable. Yeah. Yep. yeah. With, without any untoward effects. The, the, the inks here, for practical purposes, are fast, and they're just not going to move with regular old water. No. Here it is after, and you're, uh, you've yeah. begun the process of pinning it to put the yep. staples back in. Yeah, this is part of my, my reassembly process. Uh, I, everybody's got different techniques for, for putting the books back together. You, you find what works. This one works for me because I press the wraps perfectly flat. I close up the staple holes. Yeah, uh, I've <laughs> I've been working on a book right now that had uh, five staples in it. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. if, you know, that you have to close up all those holes. And yeah. uh, a point you made, Doctor Paul, too, is you know we're not when a staple goes in, you're piercing the paper, you're not removing the paper. So it's very common right. for these holes to close up. Now, finding the holes, I just use a foam backer board. Um, I, I cut it out and I just use the pins, push it through, holds it in place, uh, and then I, I slowly reinsert the staples, uh, you know, using my technique that works. But when these wraps are pressed flat like they are, um, I find them easier to work with, but they are going to be different sizes, or well, yeah, not sizes, so. but they're cut when the when the Oops. comics are cut uh, at the you know when they come off the press, they're already folded. So right. each wrap is going to be have a different measurement to it. Each subsequent so. wrap from from the cover toward the centerfold is slightly less wide. It should be Correct. the same height in yes. most instances. It's height the same height. Usually change, yeah. Although yeah. sometimes covers are cut separately and they can have overhang, yeah. but yeah. often they'll be the same height, all of them uniform. But each, if, if I'm looking at, I'm starting at the cover and I'm going toward the centerfold, each one will be a little less wide. Yeah, the, the golden, and it's age measurable. Books, golden Age books were cut, uh, several of the, them were cut with uh, not attached. Uh, mm -hmm. I, fi I find the EC books, the, the covers are a different size than the interior wraps. 
Yeah. So. And it's even true in Marvel, like Bronze Age, a lot of times you'll see a lot of the covers have overhang, even into yeah. the Copper Age. Yeah. Um, so what the consequence of that is, which is what you're referring to here, is that you can't just take the pages, stack them like this, stack them like nope. this, and then put the pins through because then it's not going to fold properly and the Correct. pins aren't in the right spot, right? Correct. So it, it does involve... It's tedious, and we like like you said, we all have our own way. We're some of us still experimenting with different ways every time. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, it's important to get right though. Yeah, as we'll yeah, talk yeah, about. Yeah. It by the way, for me, this paper quality right here, chef's kiss. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> this yeah, is perfect. Yeah, it's, it's the right color. It's the right texture. It, 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 it came out. I was really happy. Just with the barest stuff. hint of darker around the edges yep. that gives it this little bit of, of provenance that tells you it wasn't printed yesterday. I yep. love it. Before and after. Actually, these are both no, afters. Actually, these are both uh, afters, yeah. The, the, on the left, it's the book setting flat. And then on the right, it's you showing us a little bit yeah, of the a cover bit gloss. Of the, the gloss is still there. Gloss is beautiful. Here's the thing that I hope isn't to call out. Um, <laughs> but I was looking at this, and it looks to me like the cover is just a little bit shrunk. I don't know if you noticed that or if you're uh, going to disagree with me or agree with me. And I, I don't... No, because the because I've got that cover, I got my fingers underneath it curling it up. So you do that, the the interior pages are gonna shrink back. Uh, so on out, the left, out, out we view. can see. Yeah, this is this is my rationale. On the left, the book is laying flat, and we can see just a tiny mm -hmm. white line of the just interior. Now the yeah. interior doesn't shrink with the wet cleaning. If I go back to your original assessment and I look there at the book is. setting there, mm -hmm. I don't see that white line. You're right. Yeah, it's, it's and very, with the silver age book, yeah, that's so the way they normally the shrink. They shrink yeah. that way. Yeah, they won't shrink. The uh, I've I've taken measurements and I've I've had them shrink anywhere from two millimeters to half a millimeter, but it always shrinks uh, horizontally. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I I will go with you on this one. This one probably shrunk. I think it's but, just a but, tiny bit, but and we're going to talk but, about that a little yeah, bit more and. And I apologize for calling you out. This is no, live. No, we didn't talk about this beforehand. No, that's okay. Um, I'll get even with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I do think just a, just a little bit, but such a small amount that, as we said, these covers are often cut separately. That's not necessarily proof that you shrunk the cover. No, is it possible? From a third it, party. It could have just been the staples were slightly... Yep. Uh, inserted slightly uh, like I've I've done that on golden age books before that I get back together and then I look at and it's exactly what you're IDing here yeah and then I have to make the decision of do I leave it like this because it's so close within a, a hair or do I mm. go back yeah. through and remand and do you know that's yeah, a different it, case than something yeah because like I, I try to fold it so the cover matches up mm -hmm. uh, with, with the back and uh when you're pressing the new spine, which is what we did here. Mm -hmm. And you, you notice the way it's printed, where the staples are on the left, yep. uh, especially the, the lower, the lower staple, the, the alignment's good. Uh, it, oh, yeah. it, it no, doesn't it perfectly. Shrunk, it shrunk a bit. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there it is. So you sent it off to CGC. Here are the graders notes. Spine stress lines, break cover, stain top of back cover. Light creasing to cover, light rippling to cover. And you said the book had prior waviness to it too, right? Yeah, it, it did. It, it had been yeah. handled. It, it needed yeah. a good pressing. Um, but it still, you know, it still had the uh, the spine but kicks it, and things like that. It, but but uh, unless I was misreading the notes, it just goes to show that you washed it. And even the paper going through a washing process still had a little bit of the memory from the prior waviness. So it's just unless I'm unless I'm misunderstanding. So it's just as someone that does this, and people are like, "Oh, according to the graders' notes, it, the crease doesn't say it breaks color; it could be pressed out." Not necessarily. Yeah, Some, no, sometimes no, no. things just are what they are. Yeah, sometimes yeah. they yeah. are what they are. I mean, yeah, if you yeah. if you really work on it, you probably do more damage to it than anything else. Correct. Yeah. The page quality came out white, which I was I was happy with because uh, you know that's what we want. 
It was <laughs> it was perfect. Uh, Don C has this question: Did you add sizing? I did not. Best? I did not add sizing. I that is uh, that's something that I'm still I'm experimenting with it to be honest, but yep. uh, it's I I haven't had any good success with it to be so. And, I'm the, kinda, and the point here is the. The wash is so minimalist, so conservative, so and brief. Exactly. It's very short. It's not necessary to add any additional sizing because you're not removing any significant sizing yeah. from the bottom. It, it really, the cover. Yeah, it really has to soak quite a bit for quite a time to, to get the sizing out. Trust yeah. me, I have some books around here that I have fully removed the sizing with. Yeah. And so, yeah, the longer you leave it. Silver in Age, it's wash, not that hard to remove sizing. It's not. These, these were five five-minute washes yeah. So for, for the covers. that Thanks for Very the nice. question, Don. Yeah, yeah, great question. Um, nice. Beautiful. Stunning. Anybody would be happy to have this in their PC. Great job. However, however, what are we to make of the what are the we to make moral of question, the, the, yeah, the moral, the universal moral grade. ethics of it? Yeah. So I had a couple of, of topics for conversation. Okay. Um, so one is maybe I'll just roll through them and then I'll get us started on each of them. So okay. top to bottom cool. here. Do we have did did you send in conservation notes slash do we have an obligation to do so? And I did not send com uh, notes in with this. Uh, I, I didn't feel the need to. Now, mm -hmm. I do other books where I'll do tear seals, things like that, and I'll, I'll give them a full list of notes. Um, we do know that they read the notes from our previous discussions. We got the, I actually got the notes back with comments on them, <laughs> which was, notes? I don't, I, I don't know if that I was supposed to get that back. I think somebody just tucked no. it in there. It's yeah. not necessarily no. evidence to read notes, just in that case, yeah, you saw something yeah. that inferred there, there, something. There is evidence. In the yeah. Yeah. Oh, they, they read them in read, at least they, one they case. The notes, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, they, their notes indicated comprehension on some level. So they were, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and so they're, they're looking at it and they're just checking stuff off. Did I uh, put, notes in on this particular book i did not it went in uh, all natural um mm -hmm. so ethically disclosure matters i think it does um we can look at it from a standpoint of we can go let them hunt for what we did to the book so yeah. Well, you know, disclosure that's, that's their, that, that is their job but yeah. it also opens up the the window for uh, are you being deceptive? Uh, are you trying to sneak something by? Which I'm not. You know, if I put so, in a book for that's the, for a conserved grade, that's exactly what I expect back uh, yeah. as a conserved grade. I'm not looking for a for a universal grade. Yeah. So let's let's actually. So for me, disclosure is a little bit different. There's a difference between disclosure to a potential buyer and disclosure to CGC. But let's. Before we jump into that, let's talk, let's sort of, I guess, let's wrap up con conversation around conversation, conservation notes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I tend to send them in. And I know, Phil, that you don't. And I, I get both arguments here. I, in, in some regard, it, it's obviously their job to inspect a book for conservation. Correct. And... I also, you know, like somebody could say, well, I don't send in conservation notes. I also don't send them a note saying, hey, guys, this is an 8.0. That's their job, not mine, right? They're the professionals, not me in that regard. And I completely get that argument. I do think there there is a counter argument, and that is I'm the one who's working on the book, and regardless of what CGC says, that book is going to end up in somebody else's hands some point in the future because I'm not eternal. Right. My kids don't care about these books. So even if I kept it till I died, it's, it's going to be liquidated somewhere by my heirs. Somebody else is going to end up with it, or I, maybe I sell it, right? If CGC does not denote some work that I did and it ends up then down the road, I have a hand in that non-disclosure and that makes me a little bit uncomfortable and i know people for whom that is a hard stop 
And I know both buyers and people who do this work. Um, I don't think it's, I, I think, I think it, Kenny Sanderson would be fine with me. You know, I've, I've talked to him extensively about this. I think probably as you have Phil, and I think he would be fine with me disclosing that, you know, he feels very strongly about disclosure as I do right now. Here's one of the interesting things in this case, maybe who cares? Um, if the work you did was undetectable and water doesn't really harm the paper, in fact, it probably rejuvenates it. Fine. What if you had mended a spot somewhere with Japanese paper and they didn't notice it? Would you feel the same about it? It's different, but the same. <laughs> <laughs> well, any, anytime I'm going to use a Japanese paper, I'm always, I'm going to put it down in my notes. In fact, yeah. I, I, I've gone as far as uh to take pictures before mm -hmm. and after and put those in the notes themselves so they could actually see oh yeah okay yeah he, he did this we'll go right to it yeah yeah, yeah especially I've, I've taken a, a couple of books now where the, the the cover wrap is completely in two pieces where i rejoined it at the spine and mm -hmm. i've sent those pictures in you know with my notes as well so yeah the only time i i i don't put notes in at all is you know and there's no reason to if it's just a, a simple uh, clean and press didn't even yeah. wet clean so yeah. yeah so for me disclosure really matters and this is why this is uh, i think for me a big part of why restored books sell at a bigger discount than to universal than do conserved books here's the rationale a conserved book typically has a repair that you can see. And I talk about this when I do the work on my channel. I, I want it to be unobtrusive. I don't want it to be, hey guys, here's a repair. But on the other hand, I don't want it to be something that if you looked at it with a reasonable inspection, something beyond a casual glance, you would somehow miss it. I want it to, to be something that Anybody doing anything beyond a casual look will see because I don't want the next buyer or the buyer after that, whoever owns this book in the future, to be able to hoodwink somebody based on the work I did. I would feel, again, I had a certain complicity in that and it would make me uncomfortable. So this is another reason why it's this is a subtle thing, but to date, I haven't used the tan... Tengujo paper. I've used only the white. It, it's it's just. I know you It's that still thing. almost transparent. It's still almost invisible, yeah. but it's just a tiny bit more noticeable, and it's just it has that much less possibility of somebody using it basically uh, to be deceptive. For evil, yeah. evil intents yeah. for deception yeah. in the future. Yeah. So for me, it's very important that we disclose what we've done, how we've done it, the materials we've used, everything else. And I think, again, just to wrap up this concept of why do restored books sell for quite a bit less than conserved? With a conserved book, there's no possibility of deception unless somebody is a really naive buyer, right? Yeah. With a res restoration, even a fairly experienced buyer could be fooled. And I think that makes people uncomfortable and the possibility of cracking that book and passing it off as an unadulterated book oh. is just too great. And I think that's part of the reason why they sell at a discount. So I think not only does it matter ethically, morally, I think it matters in the marketplace too. Well, I'm, I'm actually buying uh, restored books. I'll, I'll look at them. Yeah. If, if I see uh, Color Touch is the only thing on the on on the comments oh <laughs> that book's mine <laughs> because i i'll get rid of that color touch um yeah. I, it, that is it's just it's something that can be removed and get rid of that purple label you yeah. know my 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 favorite uh, uh several years back because i i noticed the the specifics you know words are important and on the label it said tear seal to cover and it was my first time encountering a singular tear seal not tear seals and i cracked the book open and looked and it sure enough was a single tear seal and i was like well it could have been more straightforward and easy yeah. and then you, you see that on other labels and it is in fact just a single tear seal and it's like wow that's 
so much better than terror seals. Oh, I have to find them all instead of just find one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I found buying restored books is kind of fun. Um, I know it doesn't have probably the same financial payoff. They're probably not going to appreciate the same. On the other hand, I think re restored books at the moment are actually pretty beaten down in the marketplace. Yeah, they, I they think, are. You know, historically, yeah. they had a, a smaller gap than they do today. I think that may reverse over time. But I also love, I think there's there's at least two copies of More Fun up here that are restored. And um, yeah, I have a tech, what is it, 59 second appearance of the Penguin that was color touched mm -hmm. that I bought. Um, the red cheap. bricks. Robin yeah, looking yeah, through yeah. the window. Yeah. Yeah, it was like 500 bucks for a color touched copy. Nice. That I was like, come on. Yeah. Well, second I... Penguin. He still doesn't have a cover by then. Um, no. That's the thing too. Like, I mean, as you just expressed, Paul, it, it's not just for the incentive or finding books that we can root the restoration. Truly, some of these books are rare enough that we can still appreciate them in their restored state, yeah. knowing like it, it is what it is, and that's okay. One yeah. of my most popular videos is actually one where I bought a copy of All Flash. It's the one with the Egyptian gal on the cover with the scepter. She's green. I'm gonna say it's maybe number 19. And I bought it. I paid actually real real money for a raw book. It was four hundred bucks, a little over that. And I was doing an unboxing video, and in the middle of it, I was like, "This looks a little bit wrong." And my unboxing video became a how to detect restoration video because the <laughs> the whole book had been worked over. I and now I remember that. that yeah, movie. the whole book had been now. worked over. Now, uh. what's interesting in this case was. I said in that video, I have no interest in this book. It's restored. This is not a rare book. It's not a key book. Uh, there's no way really yeah. to get me to a price point on this where I'm going to be happy with this restored book. And I'm just going to return it to the owner politely, but firmly. That said, and that, that's how I ended the video. I reached out to the seller and I said, here's what's happened. I'm not really interested. And um, I'm sure you're an honest person fella you just i'm sure you just didn't notice you probably are not experiencing such things and i'm going to send it back i want a full refund seller you was you gave him the benefit apologetic of the yeah, yeah of course i always do yeah. uh, seller was apologetic and um said you know can you i i don't know can you educate me and we exchanged a few messages and i said the value of it is you know quite low and because there's just not demand for that particular book with this kind of restoration, I didn't, and I'm not trying to lowball you to get it to the correct value. I would yeah, just like, rather even, you, you take, money back. You know, take the, money the refund, back. and you can you can market it however you want, right? But in that conversation, um, the seller said, "I don't really want to sell a restored book," and he said, "What's a what is it worth to you so that I don't have to take it back in and then sell it?" And um, I don't remember the exact number we've we've finished on, but it was around a hundred bucks. I said yeah, you know, for hundred bucks, it's actually shows. a nice looking book. Yeah, and I'd be happy with it. Yeah, and he said done because I don't really want to have to disclose that, and, and I don't know a lot about it. And I, I'm happy with that. You're happy with that. Let's go on. So I ended up buying that book from the from that seller, and um, I was just looking at it the other day. It's a beautiful book, right? The it, price is right sometimes too for hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do think, you know, if I were to bother slabbing that and selling it, it's going to grade pretty high. And so even, a even you know, say it's a six, seven, something like that, maybe even an eight restored, um, that, that book is going to have, it's going to be worth 300 bucks or something. You know, if I go through that trouble to slab it, I'm not going to lose money on that interaction. And, and so, you know, it was kind of a win-win. But um yeah, restored books are kind of cool. I know, you know, they have a bad rap. Certainly, you know, if you thought, and this is why the disclosure matters, if you've been deceived, if you thought you had an honest book and you send it in and it comes back purple, it is gut-wrenching because you've just taken a 75% haircut probably on this yeah. book. And that is, I think, a big part of why the purple label upsets people because they – when they're shocked by it, it's a, huh. it's a, it's a gut punch. If you me. go into you know it I mean? knowing that it's a restored book and you're buying it at a discount, man, it can be one of the funner things to do in the hobby. Many of you know, if you follow the channel, my, 
my copy of All Star Number Three is restored. Yeah, and I'm uh, I'm thrilled with the book. Yeah, I I I bought a book. Same same deal. Um, I bought it. Uh, everything checked out. Uh, I did my normal treatments on it. Sent it into CGC, and they said it was trimmed. Yeah. That 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 is the one killer. Yeah, that, uh, I unless, agree with you. Unless you know what your exact measurements are and things like that, I suspected that it was trimmed. I, I think it was. Uh, yeah, it was my pep. Pep Comics number. It two. was the Peps. Yeah, I remember talking yeah, to you about it. Yeah, it, it, it was. It was a, it was a valuable book. If it was universal, yeah, it's an important book. <clears throat> yeah, now it's uh, it's significantly. There's nothing you can do to fix. That is the one thing you cannot fix. Well, that's not true. technically true. You can leaf cast all the way around it. Yeah, you, you actually can. <laughs> It, but if you boy, have the skill sets to do it, yeah, yeah. yeah. and it, and it's it's not going to look right, and you know, no. yeah, no. But technically, it, you can get you can remove that purple label from a book that's been yeah. trimmed. Technically, I, I just I, wanted that on the record. I personally can't yeah. do it. I'm fair enough. <laughs> soon, <laughs> soon. Yes, I'm working um, on my, my leaf caster, and so so is Phil's working on on his. Yeah, Phil's is going to be probably much prettier than mine, but mine's like hillbilly budget <laughs> vac vacuum <laughs> table. So well, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Me so too. one of the other things um, that I wanted to talk about here is most of what we're doing, many of the things we're doing, and in fact, many of the things that we recommend you not do, at least not in excess. Yeah. can't be detected by CGC. They're using inference. They're looking at a bunch of things and trying, and I have one more slide to talk about what those inferences are, but the bottom line, the, th the point I wanted to make here okay. is if you have put hydrogen peroxide on a book, CGC may be able to look at it and discern by inference that you probably did that, but there is no test they can do to prove that you did it. No. Now, does that even matter? The answer is no, because of my last point here. The, the point I'm making is for grading, the taste of the pudding is all that seems to matter. And I, I really just always love this saying, you know, the proof is in the tasting of the pudding is the correct saying. Most people say the, the proof is in the pudding. It doesn't really matter what recipe you followed if the pudding tastes good when you're done. And for grading, it's the same situation. Water, no water. Eraser, no eraser. Clean, don't clean. The only yeah. thing that matters is what the book looks like when it's done. And the way that you get there is what care did you take when you were doing whatever it was that you did. And so the bottom line is if you are careful, you can do things that CGC says, strictly speaking, should land you in a restored or conserved label but you can land in a universal label if you do these things so carefully, so conservatively yeah. that you essentially leave no trace and you leave no clues for them to infer that you did the thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're, you're not leaving footprints. And these say, are, these are some of the things to consider and, and I'm welcome input from you guys, but I'll run through this really quickly. Okay. The things that you do that allow them to infer that you have done something that will land you in a purple label is over whitening the paper or having mismatch in your paper quality between your pages or between your cover and your pages. You can have flaring, cockling, or other issues that make Shinkage. that that declare to the viewer that the book has been through some water cycles. Shrinkage, which I think you got away with a little bit of here on this particular book, Larry. I definitely have as well. That's not um, shrinkage. But, that's that's shrinkage. <laughs> more, more more extreme amounts of yeah. um, no, cover correct. shrink will definitely get you a purple label mm -hmm. how you handle the staples how you remove them how you return them how you rebend them exactly where you place them all of this I, I, matters that, that one that, the staples have taken a lot of practice for me you know <clears throat> i know you guys have probably removed staples that are broken uh i know i have so I started saving staples. I, I went and bought uh, off eBay a bunch of old coverless books 
uh, from different vintage years and just harvested the um, the staples out of them. Yep. Uh, now I've got yep. them labeled in different containers, and uh, I've replaced uh, uh, staples in many books. In fact, what about Maverick staples? Yeah, that, that's a big test. Yeah, you go to take a staple out and realize one of the prongs was inserted crooked and bent up yep. where there's only a little tiny nub or, and then you got to say how, like I've had to take a staple out from the centerfold because it was the only proper way. Well, I, I do to that. Be able regularly, to take it out regularly. Yeah. yeah, yeah you, you look at my videos. I, I take it from the centerfold really to keep from tearing the paper anymore because you, you, you start wrestling. It went in one way and then it was folded over. Now you start taking it out backwards without it going exactly the way it went back you know the way it went in you're gonna tear some wraps in the middle uh for certain so that's why i i'll take it out rotate it 90 degrees and pull it all the way through on one side side of the interior wrap and that way you're not disturbing the holes one of the also just i mean the 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 most prevalent thing that i can lend in this discussion is you know i've offered a a non-restorative cover bath for years now on books that is literally the epitome of this it's it's the proof is in the tasting of the pudding it's it's i found it by accident and how i was removing tape and then i realized that it was something that had benefits on its own as long as the process and procedure is done exactly to a t perfectly and it's it's the same thing as is how this book was cleaned yep. just in a different way but it yep. was using the same procedure just like on the other full end, you might have your, uh, as you said, quote unquote, hillbilly, whatever, to make your <laughs> faster. But, poor, but poor the, the proof will be that, you know, as long as yeah. we're using the same materials and doing it proficiently, our castings will both look perfect, you know? So that's, you know, there's many I, I, different ways to achieve the same goal. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just about doing it right, the right way. Yeah. I, you know, it's like when I, my, my leaf caster, I, I, I know nothing about leaf casting. Um, I, I've watched Jerry. I, 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 I've, I've seen uh, Kenny. And it's just like, yeah, I want to try this. So yeah. um, I started saying, okay, well, I've looked at leaf casting tables. They're expensive. Yeah, to, The to guy know. that does the best casting, Kenny, does the, the yeah. Home Depot special. And he does the best leaf casting work in the industry. You know, yeah, so it's like. 100 percent you can do what I do and buy a caster to make the process easier, but the process itself has to it, be it, done it, it, it's, it in accordance is, with the right techniques or it, else it doesn't art, matter. It's an art form. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's a, it's a skill set. It's an yeah. art form. Not everybody can do it. I don't know yeah. if I can do it. I'm going to so, give it no, a, give to that try. point, give yourself more credit. And, and you know, that X-Men got through, Yep. to to you know a grader at the grading company and it looked everything that we did well, we put I, the book I, back together perfectly and everything was yeah I, I got rid of a, a, a early Superman book it was in the teens uh, on the cover but it was just shredded it was a it was a total leaf casting uh, project for for somebody uh, but it, I, I knew I couldn't do it and I think I sold it for a song on eBay just to get it out because I, I kept looking at it and go, man I, I don't want to put tape on this thing you know I, yeah. I, I don't know how to fix it so uh, I got rid of it now I'm looking at it now going okay if I only knew how to fix it um, uh, I, I, I absolutely. So, I'm going to play around with it. I, I I've got my. I went to uh, Sam's Club and I bought a uh, Ninja pulp making machine, and uh, <laughs> I'll grind up some of those old comic books I was telling you about that I the coverless books. You know, I'll, I'll just shred the edges off so there's no color in it, and then uh, go from there and just make different colors of pulps. Oh, we're looking um, forward to it. Anything else that either of you would put on this bulleted list for details that you need to be mindful of to avoid those purple the, labels? The, 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 the cockling is uh, – it took, it, it took me a bit to, to, to get rid of that when I, you know, I was teaching myself. And mm -hmm. so I'd have cockling, and I'd go back and redo things and you know, just experiment uh, a bit. But um, may, may actually, Dr. Poe, why don't you explain cockling? You, so, you have very good explanations for this. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is essentially kind of waviness in the paper. So it's not really wrinkling. 
it's it's a but it's a a pattern in the paper that forms because you have essentially differential drying. So as paper dries, you are creating some hydrogen bonds. And what's happening chemically is if the paper doesn't all dry more or less at the same time and it's in a flat state when it's dried, the paper will dry differentially. And as it dries, it shrinks. And so it will shrink in one place but not in another. And then the hydrogen bonds form and they get locked like that. And that's what causes it. So cockling and even flaring, these are caused by not properly controlling the speed at which and the position the paper is in when you're drying. And so this is one of the things that Larry figured out and that I give him credit for all the time is heat pressing wet or damp pages and getting good results is very yep. difficult. It yep. is one of the things that uh, yep. most folks experimenting with will experience a lot of cockling and I generally don't do it. Larry's given me some pointers and given me some, um, a, a little bit of, uh, uh, confidence. And I have started doing just damp pages. Not, I wouldn't really go so far as to call them wet. They've been pressed between blotters where I've changed out the blotters maybe twice already. And That's so exactly the page, the page is still damp and I will press it only between paper. One of the things I don't use is I've, I've gone actually away from SRP. I found SRP contributes to cockling because it's more or less impervious to water. So the water doesn't have any way to escape as you're applying the heat. So the heat. I can understand course, that argument. Yeah. yeah, yeah me too. Me too. I, I, I would never use SRP on uh, any paper that had moisture in it. The, the heat, of course, gives the water molecule more energy, so it excites it and accelerates it. It starts moving around. It starts trying to find its way out of the paper. This is why, you know, heat can help dry paper out quicker, right? Because it's essentially energy going into those water molecules. Well, if they don't have anywhere to go because they're bouncing against the SRP and going right back into the paper because the SRP is essentially impervious to water, then you get the same effect only it's accelerated and you get cockling and so and most people i think most people that learned traditional just like dry clean and press they swear by srp or they just learned it they've never even thought of using anything else lately i've been getting a lot of questions like no srp and i say yeah i just i don't use it very often anymore i still use it on modern books yeah i will I'll use, use it, it on a modern book yeah yeah and and i use it from time to time on different you know um actually on mike's rom i used srp i think that's the last time i used it on the channel uh but most of the time now i just use cardstock and people are like well doesn't it stick and i go think about that for a minute like think before you ask questions sometimes people <laughs> like you put you put cardstock underneath your cover between the cover and the first page. Did you ever worry about that sticking to anything? Yeah. I don't know why you think it's going to stick to the outside of the cover. It's the same. Um, so the no, wrong, generally it doesn't. I, I have had paper. That would be the only thing that would lend like to a reasonable level. You're like, it can't be wet paper. Yeah. If it was like, wet, it's going to, it's going to bond to that. Yeah. That sure. yeah. 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 That's why I, I would, yeah. yeah, it's it's always got to be fully dry. But for the sake of rational argument, yeah, you're right. I'm just like. No, well, to, no <laughs> my, actually, and I, I should clarify that. That was on a book that was just a humidified book. It wasn't even wet clean. Oh, okay. And they so were, it, it, it was yeah. just kind of humidified. And I think it's just, listen, when you when you start in this work and you learn a certain way, you're, you know, like all humans, your brain gets locked in, yeah. right? Yeah. And you you, once you do something many times a certain way, you don't you often don't look at alternative ways to do that thing. So, well, you know, at least when I was, with me, he also stopped using SRP. I think a yeah. lot of the most talented pressers don't use it very often. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't call myself talented, but uh, I stopped using it um, either. But I, yeah, I actually am just, referring to others. Well, it, yeah. I, I know. It's just like people that uh, do way more than me. Yeah. To yeah be people, clear. people are asking is, is to expand on what you said, you know, the molecule, the water molecules seek uh, a way out. Yeah. And when I'm putting stuff in the heat press, um, most heat presses, in fact, 
pretty much all of them that I know of, the heat is coming from the top. It's coming from the, the top clamshell. Mm -hmm. So it's transmitting downwards. So I will put an extra thickness of uh, paper towels is all I'm using, bounty paper towels, not blotting mm -hmm. paper, anything fancy, um, when I have a wet wrap. It's under pressure. It's going to seek an exit away from that heat. And when you take it apart, I only do it for about 10 minutes because I do mm -hmm. a couple of couple cycles through it. You, you, I'll peel off the top one. It's pretty much almost dry, the one that's closest to the heat. The one on the bottom, it's sopping wet. Mm -hmm. Then I'll repeat the cycle until the wrap is fully dry. And yeah. then I can move on to the next phase. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening is the, the water molecules are getting excited. They're being essentially sort of pushed away from yep. that heated platen. And that's where they end up. They're getting deposited in that bottom paper towel. So, so I'll put I, an extra thickness uh, of paper towels, an extra layer down there. So yeah. just you know, like I said, you know, solid. Well, like I said, I, I credit you with having figured that out. I did not have the confidence to do that. So I put together a couple thoughts for conclusion. This isn't so much a conclusion being like, hey, we solved it, guys. It's more of like, <laughs> in conclusion, these are our thoughts. It's still yeah. it's still very open-ended. Um, what is the actual best practice? I don't even think the three of us agree exactly. Well, the um, three of us use vastly different methods of doing things. Where If we did the same thing, this would be a very boring discussion for true. people to watch. I still we use also, SRP. Hey. Okay. Yeah, the, <laughs> he uses SRP. No, but the thing is, is we have vastly different techniques on how we do things. We see them in our videos, and that's the best part about having these discussions with, with the three of us. I mean, yeah. we can we can bounces you know we're sitting around a round table and everybody's watching so yeah. that's what we're doing so with respect to submitting books to cgc i think um i'm on full disclosure larry is on disclosure if it's obvious conservation mm -hmm. and phil is on yeah, not again. <laughs> the experience has been I, I did disclosure never, yeah. but yeah. um it never seemed to matter so i don't bother anymore yeah. I will say though, um, I, uh, as much as I've gotten used to not doing it, uh, CG. Okay, so just to clarify, CGC is so good at working with me when I encounter issues. I've said this in the past. Yeah, and you yeah. know, and, uh, more recently, I've encountered some things, and literally to a T, they they solved every one of them. Like really, yeah. Matt Nelson is is in, and he he didn't do it because. He was trying to just get me out of his hair. He did them because he knew what I was asking for was something that required yeah. his attention. And um, to that point, I really, I would like there to be a way that CGC could get flagged on submissions saying this was a book that had conservation work. Please take the notes into consideration when you're looking at it because oh, we yeah. just want to have a conversation with cgc to help them and they i'm sure as matt is reasonable and would agree they would want the conversation to be there first instead of later and then they have to solve the problem if well, you can just be you know if like the, the whole point of the note should help what you guys do in theory should should be of only a, a benefit and it should help the situation i, I, I would love, i that. would love to to to, to talk to to Matt and uh, you know help come up with a real conclusion for you know our our books and and what is conservation you know I know I, I, I see a lot of different things come back and forth you know you guys got Matt on speed dial you know just call him. <laughs> <laughs> tell him to show well, up not quite. <laughs> <laughs> not quite he's a busy man but he does care oh, no and he cares about the books he cares in an you know, I think when I spoke, when I have spoken to him, one of the things that's obvious to me is he really cares about the next owner of the book. Yeah. Yes, you currently own the book. He wants to do right by you, but he wants to make sure that, like I said before, you're not the final owner of the book, right? No. You, some people say, oh, I'm the caretaker of it. And to a certain degree, that's true. You're going to sell it. You're going to pass away. Your heirs will do something yeah. with it, whatever. He wants to make sure that that next person also got a fair shake. It's obvious to me when I talk to him, you know, that he wants to make sure that that book is represented properly to that next buyer. Exactly. And I think that's balancing those 
needs is very important. And so, um, I would know, like my cynic latitude reversed. Truly, I, I really would. And I would like to, I would like to, to do the work on a book and I'm like, you know what? Yeah. I just did the work on this tech 38 and I want them to know everything. And I list the notes down and they get it and they're like, Oh, Phil sent in this tech 38. Let's look at the notes. Oh, yep. Check. That's what he did. You know, that's I, in, a, in an ideal world. Yeah. <laughs> well, if I just, just to be clear, I, I think it's worth restating. I don't think there's a correct answer here. Um, I also, you know, I, I completely get the attitude of, well, I also don't tell CGC what the grade is, right? Like I completely get that. I don't, I would never argue with somebody that says that's their position on it. Um, I know that some people feel strongly about making that argument. I don't care to, I think that there's room. I don't think this is a black and white issue. And I think there's room to have any opinion anywhere on that spectrum, frankly, and still be an intelligent you know, informed person. So I, I actually was giving the spectrum here not to call you out, but just to state that here are three reasonable people who have, you know, opinions in different places on the spectrum. But I do appreciate Phil in you, you said this in our interview, that you wish that sending in graders notes <laughs> had the effect that you would like it yeah. to, but yeah. in your experience, it doesn't. So you don't Honestly, do it. And, well and I being yeah. real now too. I, I, I truly, I want to live in the world where I can, I can do it because I know that there's a better chance that I don't have to deal with fixing the problem later and it can just be yeah. viewed correctly the yep. first time. Like, yeah. and then, sure. you know, CGC is viewing it the same way where they're like, Oh, cool. We don't have to play guessing games on what's done. Like this is a person that is on our vetted list where we, in some ways trust what they send us you know that that's the yeah. one loose part about it is how they kind of yeah. can vet that but I, I have a sneaking suspicion that they they have a way to do it because it's not like secretive people are doing work on these books it's usually people that are on some yeah, degree it's of a small handful and, of people yeah, yeah 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 i mean the counter argument to that though is of course that human beings are biased and imperfect judges. And if I know the book is from you, maybe I've seen a lot of your books and I know you do good work. I mean, maybe just pumps the grade up a little bit in my subconscious, or maybe we're friends or, you know, or I like your, your online sort of personality or whatever there. It is important for the graders to not know who owns the book and who worked on the book for getting as close as possible to objectivity, which of course we're humans, it's not possible to get all the way there, but we'd like to err on the side of that. And so I do understand why they've sort of, they're trying to balance two things that are competing there and, and it's tough. So before, I mean, I'm already going to be accused of being a CGC fanboy, whatever, <laughs> but, um, there's you no know, winning. There's we're no doing winning. the best they can. And yeah. um, they're humans. I don't, I'll, I'll actually, I'll say this about CGC in the same that I often say it about my friends. I'm not perfect. So I don't expect CGC to be perfect. Um, if I expect them to be perfect, then I think they should be able to hold me to the same standard, which would be embarrassing because I'm not perfect. So yeah. if people just took, put some perspective on their view of CGC and other institutions, I think uh, the world would be a little less outraged place and it might be a little nicer. The last line you put in the conclusion here is such a crucial part. Yes. Of uh, let's yeah, talk really, really, let me, really, let me, really, let me just address this sentence before that real quick. And then let's, let's close on that. Cause we've been on online for a little while now. Um, if I assume there are a lot of folks who are like watching this, at least in part, because they would like to get more blue labels Fewer yes. conserved, fewer. Labels. That's exactly fewer what plot, right. Yeah. Fewer <laughs> plot. I'm going to do that too. I'm going to destroy my book. Money. Larry yeah. said he could do it. Yeah. yeah. So we can't guarantee you no purple labels. We can. No. We all. We can't no. even give you a recipe and say if you follow this exactly, you won't get a purple label because I can't, I can't guarantee a, a conserved label. Yeah. yeah. Paul, after, uh, well, not not your excellent video because this isn't like the first time that. This has been public, just I guess. Uh, no, that you no it's just, right? uh, so my adventure I, comics did the same thing. Yeah, in now, the last year, 
yeah. with other cleanings like this, this has been a, and I, I immediately can ID it when I know what someone's getting at. They're like, Hey, do you, can you remove stains? And I'm like, it's exactly this. They're like, yeah. can you guarantee that I can get a blue label and you can remove all this and get this six to an eight? And my answer is no. I can do it. There's zero guarantee. And their hope goes to, ah, oh. And it's yeah. it's the reality. It is the yeah. reality of this. Yeah, we're yeah. we're not miracle workers. There's no. yeah, and there's some subjectivity to the grade. And again, they're using inference. So yeah. how many clues yeah. did you leave behind? How perceptive are they to those clues? And it's not a cut and dried case. We we gave you a bolded list of things to pay attention to. And then the other thing I want to say is this sentence here: use the least invasive method and materials that will accomplish your conservation objective, whatever that is. Yeah. So be a student, practice, learn these techniques, and use the least invasive technique available to you, use the least invasive materials available to you to accomplish your objective. You will get fewer purple labels, you will get more conserved and more universal labels is really the only way to summarize what we're telling you bec what I'm my message for you. Yeah. Because again, there is no perfect cut and dried. I, I could give you my recipe exactly that I've used to, to put in hundreds of books that all came back universal. You could use that exact recipe to your skill level and get all purple or no purple. It just, that's how it is. Well, the other it's, thing it's is, is subjective. We have all destroyed books practicing and learning our, our, our trade. Yeah. I know I, I've destroyed, when I first started, I destroyed just oh, so many books till I got it right. Mm -hmm. So it's just like practice, 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 but practice on a crappy book. Please. Uh, no, no, please don't take your action <laughs> on and, and wet clean it. Please. <laughs> <laughs> and so the, the conclusion for me here is we, we're sh we showed you an outcome that a talented conservator achieved do not assume you can use even that same exact recipe, even if you watch that video on loop, and Larry will thank you because he'll get three cents from YouTube if you do. Not yet. You, <laughs> you're still, we still can't guarantee you that you will not get a purple label for that book. So be mindful of that. Do these things at your own risk. And again, be a student, practice, and you'll get you'll get more blue than purple if you really have attention to detail and um, you try to step lightly and use the least invasive methods available to you and you don't bite off more than you can chew you'll get more universal than than anything else guys any closing thoughts Nope. <laughs> no, I'm very, uh, well, second, so, yeah, yeah, we appreciate you tuning in, and uh, we we're going to do this every uh, every Sunday. And uh, please ask questions. Uh, you can get a hold of us through our our channels or our other Instagram and other places like that. Feel free to reach out to us. There are no stupid questions. We will strive to answer any one of your questions as clearly and concisely as we possibly can. Speaking of, thanks to a few others. Uh, thanks to everybody that joined. Thanks for those especially that commented. Billy had a question about a, a pressing a book. Billy, come visit us in the Facebook group. Ask, post the question there. I'm sure there'll be plenty of people that uh, want to help out. I also want to give a shout out to Bronzeville. Bronzeville Comics is obviously a great channel here on YouTube and a fan of a follower at least, I guess I shouldn't ascribe fan fanhood to Bronzeville, but uh, a, a consistent viewer of the channel. And I really appreciate it. Thanks for being here. And, um, you know, he says, hasn't gotten into wet cleaning. Let me just say yet, you know, yep. we'll, con we'll yeah. convert you. Yeah. All right. Thanks everybody so much for joining. Right. Have a great Good. week and uh, take care of one another. All right. Thumbs up. Wait, I can't. <laughs> I can't get below.